Hi, I really enjoyed learning about informed consent this week um, and just knowing what the profession expects from us as well as my state specifically, which was Colorado or is Colorado. So as I was Googling around looking for information, seeing if there was anything different in the Colorado informed consent compared to the ACA Code of Ethics, it was very similar. It actually referred back to the governing ethics code of the profession a lot. So um, it did point out placing the welfare of the clients first, maintaining generally accepted standards of the practice, adhering to the recognized code of ethics in the gover governing the profession, and then protecting client co confidentiality as well. And then specifically for informed consent, it basically said refer to the ACA code of ethics on this, but it did point out uh, knowing the client's knowledge regarding security issues, confidentiality, structure, etc. So um, I googled and found Infinity Connections in Colorado for my um, example, and it looked like this was specific for a counselor, which was kind of nice. So I'll kind of discuss what I found in there and then where it is in the ACA Code of Ethics as well. So she discussed her qualifications, uh, like her schooling and all of that right in the beginning, which was really nice to see. And a little bit farther down, she discussed her specializations and the background that she has and where her therapy is rooted in. And the ACA Code of Ethics talks about this in A to B saying that the client has the right to know all of that. So she also discussed her payment structure, how she accepts payment, the penalties that ensue if an appointment is missed or not canceled in time. And the ACA Code of Ethics also discusses this in A to B. She communicates what should be done in case of an emergency, which I thought was really nice to see. Um, by encouraging clients to call an emergency hotline in the area. It also discussed, which was kind of interesting, that she does she only does non-emergency uh, therapy sessions during the week. So it did kind of discuss that if that was a, a need for a client, she might refer them out elsewhere. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. And the ACA Code of Ethics talks about that in F4B. She discusses in great, great detail the risks and benefits of counseling and how there, it's proven that counseling can help, but it doesn't always happen as quickly as people want it to happen. So that was nice that she put that in there. The ACA Code of Ethics talks about that in D2B. And then she discusses the client's right to confidentiality and where they can find their rights to confidentiality in Colorado's statutes. So that was kind of nice that she referred them to where they can find all this information for the state. She also discusses situations where she might share information with a colleague for a consultation. And it talks about how even when that would take place, the client's confidentiality would be kept by not using their name. And it did say that by signing this form, the client is consenting to that. So that was kind of nice to see. And the ACA Code of Ethics talks about that in B2E. She discusses how a client has the right um, to seek another opinion or terminate the counseling relationship at any point. She also discusses what's appropriate and what's inappropriate between a client and a counselor, specifically when it came to sexual relationships. And the ACA Code of Ethics talks about that in A5C. So that was kind of all that I saw. Um, it was kind of a shorter <laughs> informed consent. But it was nice to be able to go and research in the actual ACA Code of Ethics and compare it to this. Uh, I think that she hit all the things that she needed to, and she made it nice and short and sweet. So I think she did a great job. Thanks so much.